Hey guys, so this is a bit of an odd one, this one. This is another K611S with, I suspect, a rotary encoder failure. And I've done this before, but I didn't show the actual repair. So I wanted to do a decent video showing how to repair the rotary encoders on these because they are uh, significantly a weak point, basically. So this one seems to be a reasonable nick. It's got its own little problems. The main thing being that it is mega, mega loud. The motor's either misaligned or the bearings are knackered. It does eject, um, but it basically gets stuck in between modes. So that rotary encoder switch is basically a rotary switch that lets it know what mode it's in. And usually they're either pitted up or they're in the wrong position when someone's put it back together, but we'll see. Someone's obviously been there before. You can tell that all the cables aren't tied down and whatever else. Excuse me if I'm nasally today, but I'm just recovering from a cold. Uh, someone's been in here recently, I think, because uh, the pinch roller and the belts look relatively new. Um, belts are all intact, which is nice. So if we can just get this to focus, you can see the belts there. It seems like it's flapping about a bit. Maybe it's, I don't know, too long or whatever, but it is extremely loud. The motor, I would suggest, is either the bushes are shot on it or it's not been installed properly. Right then, so I'll show you what it does. So it'll eject and, and whatever else, fine. Uh, but if we put a tape in, I'll take the cover off so you can see what we're doing. If I put a tape in, um, it basically, it's getting stuck in between modes. It'll rewind, it won't fast forward. Uh, it'll start playing, it'll stop, it'll, it'll you know, it, it won't do one of anything. And as you can see, the head's flicking up and down there. It doesn't know what it's doing. There's a few switches involved in this, but generally the only uh, limit switches there are in this transport is related to the door, whether it's open or closed. So the entire transport is controlled electronically by the rotary encoder, which is a round grey switch, I'll show you in a bit. We'll get it out, give it clean, work it out. And as you can see, it kind of wants to work, but also doesn't, which is a nice refreshing change from just knackered belts, if I'm honest with you. So, uh, we're going to pull transport out basically and get right into the absolute depths of it and then just work it out from there. And as you can see, that's not doing anything. So, uh, uh, we'll whip the transport out and see what we've got. Transport's out, that belt is too big for a start. And I've got loads and loads and loads of videos on taking these transports out, so I'm not going to cover that again, but that big belt's wrong. And I suspect if the big belt's wrong, the little belt will be wrong as well, which won't help. So first we do then is we need to take the motor plate off. This is two small black screws. And then there is a, a long brass one above the motor. Um, on this I worked out that the uh, what someone had done is there's a plastic bush that has to sit underneath the motor plate. And they put it in the wrong place, which has led to this motor being misaligned, which isn't going to help it for a start. So hopefully once we get it put back together properly and, and realigned, it will uh, quieten it down a little bit. It's not putting so much pressure on the bushings. And there's the, the old belt. It's in good nick, but it's wrong size, I suggest. All right, so if you just give the caps to the pulp and then flip it over, and you'll find that there's a, a small plastic washer on the other side. Usually uh, this is caked in grease and or oil, so it just takes a little bit of persuasion to get it to unseat. I should have used tweezers here, but I didn't have them to hand. Um, it's just a case of trying to retain that, because that's what keeps your capstan in place, basically. And uh, if you can get it out sensibly, here we are with my massive great sausage fingers trying to get it out now. Uh, you really don't want to lose it, to be honest with you, because they're a funny size. They're, they're, they're a little tiny bit smaller than the capstan shaft itself. Uh, so you really want to keep that nice and safe with your capstan there. There is one on the other side in between the capstan and the uh, brass bush. Next thing, what we're going to do is uh, this this black um, protective cover is uh, the light that goes on behind your tape. So whip this out. There's two black screws at the top. And then it's kind of hinged and under two clips at the bottom. So if you just try and rive it out, it, it just won't have it. So you've got to lift it up at the screw end 
and then slide it towards you or out of the transport at the same time. And I find tweezers absolutely invaluable with these two screws particularly because I can't get my fingers in. And uh, it has a habit of dropping inside the unit. Uh, so lift it up at the screw end and then just pull away. Eventually. In order to remove the next side, kind of sandwich layer of the uh, the transport, we need to move that uh, that black arm in the middle. And that black arm is what controls the reels fast forward and rewind. Um, and generally it's held in with a plastic clip, but this plastic clip's been lost. And I suggest that's not really, um, there isn't a clip on it at all. It's not helping, so I'll show to make a new one of them later on because they are a nightmare and they get lost all the time. But once that's off now, it'll let you remove the last sandwich piece of the uh, the transport. Where the wash has gone, I don't know, but that's not a problem. We'll work that out. As you can see, I've up, I removed this transport with the door open. It's just a bit easier, I find. Um, so the next piece of the sandwich is this plate which retains your um mode select belt and whatever else in place but on the back of it is the rotor encoder and also the sensors for the reels so the, the transport knows whether it's playing or, or what it's doing so i'll show you those when i take it off as well because there has been a few comments on other videos about what are these mirrors what are these sensors what's a rotor encoder so very carefully pull it off and you'll notice that your uh, your secondary belt will come off with it And then that little plastic uh, washer you can see there by my right thumb is the one that's in the wrong place. But we'll sort that later. So someone has been in here recently. Someone's had a good play. Give it a service. It's very clean. Uh, as you can see, there's no muck. This is your rotor encoder. And funnily enough, it's about 180 degrees out as I've just removed that there. So um, that's probably the problem is it's, it's 180 degrees out basically. But I'm going to strip it and give it a clean anyway. I have a feeling that somebody's had a good go at this and unfortunately not worked. These are your light sensors. These sense whether the reels are turning or not. It's important to give them a good IPA, but these are absolutely immaculate. And uh, they kind of sit on the back of the reels and sense whether the reels are turning or not. And when it comes to the end of the tape and it stops turning, it'll stop your transport. Everything else looks totally fine. Give every cog, give every gear the once over. Look for cracks, look for missing teeth. Uh, the same one here as well, so uh, that's your uh, secondary belt. That's what drives the mode select part of the transport, along with the two uh, white wheels that always come off. This one's uh, from your mode select wheel to your motor bushing, and the other one's to your motor bushing, and they go there later on. And as you can see, that drives that big grey wheel, which is your mode select wheel. So looking at this now, the mode select wheel, all this part of the transport has been put back together fine, but whoever's put that um, the last slice back on has basically uh, not set it up properly, not aligned everything. So this arm always comes off. Just make sure you know where it goes, as does this arm. It can only really go on one way, and hopefully if you're doing this job, then you can refer back to my video anyway. That just sits on there with a finger in that big grey mode select wheel sits in the groove and also at the bottom there's a finger on that grey sliding bar at the bottom oh, sorry a white sliding bar if i move my big hand out of the way then uh, you'll be able to see what i'm doing i'm just basically just making sure everything aligns um there you go this uh, this big reel on the right there is what controls your door open and close it's spring fed Inside is your mirrors on the backs of the reels what i was saying about and uh, if you uh, disengage the lock you can turn them reels and they need to be immaculate a lot of these players that have problems where it'll play and then stop and then play and then stop it's almost always down to the fact that they're mucky and as you can see those two light sensors there when you put that back on they look at the mirrors and detect whether it's turning or not so ipa them give them a clean every single time these are immaculate as i say someone's been in this and unfortunately just become unstuck uh this is always orange like it's faded, but I've never seen a cracked one yet. And that drives your mode select wheel from your secondary motor. So on the back here, this is our rotor encoder. You'll notice on the outside edge of it, there's an arrow uh, and a line. They need to be aligned when you put this back together. 
uh, and basically the notch is at the six o'clock position. So what you need to do then is uh, unscrew this. If I can get my big screwdriver in there for now, for now. And uh, unscrew it and then you need to desolder those, uh, those five contacts there. And once you've desoldered them, it'll come off. I have a feeling that somebody's had this one off already. Uh, simply because there's some little uh, soldering iron marks on it. And I'll show you why you need to go with it in the soldering iron in a minute. But uh, yeah, once it's loose then you can just go ahead and desolder those five contacts. There's nothing else really to this board. There's nothing else you need to do. Uh, so that's where it turns. As you can see, there's an arrow on the inside. And there's also a line at the bottom there. They need to be aligned when you put them back together. So once that's desoldered, then that'll just lift out of place. And usually on the back of it, there's some plastic tabs that hold it all together. Now, as you can see on here, someone's already been in this. Cut off the plastic tabs and give it a bit of a melt with a soldering iron to hold it back together. So these are usually have plastic tabs, all these four points. You have to slice them off with a Stanley blade. And once you slice them off, the orange bit and the grey bit will separate and you can see the contacts inside that will need cleaning. And if this hasn't been done, generally they're absolutely minging. They're, you know, they're all oxidised and whatever else. But for this one, someone's done half a job. Uh, or someone's done their best attempt, should we say. Let's not let's not diss whoever's been in here, because at least they had the, the nouse to get in and give it a go. Um, and basically, I'm just going to separate this out, because it's not really held together very well, if I'm honest with you. And there's like a frame that goes on the outside. And then there is a sort of grey wheel there. And underneath is some contacts. And it's these contacts basically that is the problem. Uh, generally, these are, you know, this is absolutely covered in bits of plastic. It's full of oil for some reason. I mean, I'm not sure why, but it's it's just got oil and grease and muck all over it. And you need to give them contacts a chance to get sorted. Uh, and make a good connection. Otherwise, this is the only thing that electronically controls this transport, this entire switch. And all it does is, you know, it lets the system detect what's going on. Is it is it fast forwarding, playing rewinding, whatever? As you can see, this is a bit of IPA. Um, it's minging basically. So I'll give it a bloody good clean. Once I've got the uh, the grease and the muck off it, I'm going to run over it with a little bit of light emery paper just to clean up those contacts and give them the absolute best I can. Uh, the whole thing is, I don't know whether it's had like grease leached into it, or maybe somebody's just been a bit overzealous with the oil or whatever, but either way, it's, you know, it's it's all leached inside and it's no good for electronics. Fine for the plastic bits and fine for your transport, but electrics, no. So, uh, yeah. This needs to be immaculate, and um, there's there's a couple of forum posts about this piece of equipment, but I've never seen a video of anybody actually do anything with it. So give it a really light going off with a bit of emery paper. You'll lose a bit of that green. Uh, I'm sure there's a technical name for it, but that kind of green paint that you have on the traces and the tracks. But you know, it's only paint. Nobody's hopefully ever going to see this ever again. This should be good for another, you know, 20, 30 years maybe. This is maybe 30 year old, even though somebody's been in it already. Um, I just realised how nasally I am. I'm really sorry about it, but I wanted to make this today. So, yeah, get all that, get all that crud off. Make sure you give it a last cursory uh, wipe off with IPA. And make sure it is IPA as well. You know, don't use soapy water. Don't use lighter fluid or anything like that. If you really don't have anything, uh, glass cleaner is probably about as close as you're going to get. Or nip down to Super Jug and get some um, makeup brush cleaner. That is basically IPA. Uh, it's like a pound a bottle. You can get it from most chemists. They generally don't sell IPA, but they will sell makeup brush cleaner. Uh, just don't get nail remover, which is acetone, which is uh, it'll just melt everything it touches. And definitely don't use petrol. Um, we've all tried to use a bit of petrol for cleaning and it, you know, it's good for bikes, but not for this. Anyway, I'm just chatting rubbish now. So get everything out of that. 
any slim chance of you know any grease getting in there is going to be pointless and then these little arms just give them a little bit more upward force to allow that connection to go all right so that where that's sandwiched together obviously that puts a bit of pressure on them and that keeps them on the tracks just make sure they're all uniformly kind of uh, pressed up there nice one that'll do because this is a job you really don't want to have to go back in and do twice so the first bit is that squeeze them two bits together and then it sits in the little center in the hole uh, in the hole in the center of the green bit and then stick your collar back on this can only go on one way uh, because there's kind of a tab on one edge of it and then just align that up as best you can you're kind of fighting against those sprung arm bits here but it's, it's not really that that crazy and now basically you need to uh to make sure that isn't going to go anywhere so the way i like to do it is grab your soldering iron people with expensive soldering irons look away and just give them little tabs a tiny little melt it'll stink your house out for about 10 minutes but um when they dry that's sufficient to keep it in place and then obviously once you put that back on the, the circuit board it's held in with two brass screws anyway and that's what's good so that'll uh, swing around quite nicely. By my left thumb is the line at the bottom where you need to align the arrow when you put it back on. And as you can see, the arrow's on the outside of the, the grey disc in the middle. So stick that back on. Screw it in place first before you resolder. Otherwise, uh, you're in danger of ripping out your solder and your tracks and whatever before you, uh, before you even get this chance to get it tested. So stick your two screws in. And then go through and solder those five points while I just drop everything everywhere. And then don't forget when you're soldering or soldering, if you're uh, if you're visiting me from from over the pond, hello. Um, that feels good. Don't forget when you're soldering, uh, you heat up the pad and the pin. You're not heating up your solder first, so heat up your pad and your pin, and then just touch it with a bit of solder. And then just go through all five of those connections. Pretty straightforward and quite satisfying too, let's be honest. I'm sure there's something wrong with my soldering or there's something that I just want you to not touch that um, light sensor because it will melt. And that's it. We are all good. So now what we need to do is this pin on the, uh, on your mode select wheel is what is going to sit inside the uh, the little hole there. And you'll notice that arrow matches up with that line I was on about. So just use a bit of common sense, make sure everything's aligned. And that's it. Stick it back on. Don't forget to, to stick your belt back on because you're in a world of pain if you don't put your, your belt on. I've chose to replace these belts. Every time I get one of these in, I just buy a set of belts. I think they're about 7 quid, seven ninety five, something like that. The pinch roller on this looks brand new. I'm not going to touch that. I usually would out of recourse, but um, yeah, stick your mod select belt on there. On the back of this wheel is a motor, and this is what moves your mod select wheel. And then that in there allows it to do its thing. That uh, that white arm needs a lining on the right there. Just give that a little bit of a nudge, hopefully. Once this sits down, it'll just nudge that arm along into that groove on your mode select wheel there as well. All right, so once that's all together and aligned, stick your screws in. When you press that this first plate down, you're actually pressing against the spring as well, which is to do with the door opening mechanism. So when you sit this on your transport, this top, uh, yeah. the first part of the sandwich, shall we say, you'll feel a bit of pressure and that's fine just press it down seat it home on its little holes and screws and whatnot and then once it's back together and you got those screws back in you need to pop that belt back off its uh that mode select belt in there is kind of sat on those two arms if you remember you need to stick that on you only get one go at that <laughs> so make sure you do it properly Right, so what's next then? So that first bit of the sandwich is on. I did sort that arm out for those of you that have noticed there, look. Just so that, um, you know, 
I've noticed that as we're making a video and uh, it, it was done during. So I'm going to stick the capstan on now, fire that in there and then look for your little uh, clear washer. And the easiest way to do this is to sit it on top and just press your finger down it as hard as you can. It's going to poke in the finger a little bit, but, you know, grin and bear it. And then just slide that all the way to the bushings with, uh, well, whatever you want, a pair of tweezers, uh, you know, a pair of pliers or something like that. So now what we're ready to do is I'm going to show you some magic. you like this. Pause. Paul Daniel says, not a lot. But that washer's missing on top of there, right? There's no chance you're going to get one of them. Generally, that shaft is the perfect diameter internally of the insides of a pen, like a big biro or something, all right? So find out your nearest pen and rob a bit off the end of it. So get yourself a scalpel. Cut it. needs to be about half a mil wide, something like that. If you knack it up, then you can just choose another one. But basically, take a slice. As you can see, that's maybe, I don't know, half a mil, something like that. And then we're going to attach that onto that post, much the same as what I did with that capstan. And uh, it's the perfect size. And even the insert out of that pen can just go straight back in your pen. And the missus will never know. So, win-win. Uh, I think I've had about three washes out of that pen. But it can be a bit of a pain to get it down first time. But once it's on, it goes over that bit on the top. Uh, you probably have to use, there you go. Probably have to use both hands and just give it a bloody good push. And what that'll do is that'll retain uh, that that arm needs replacing, retaining in place. It can't be flapping about. If it does, it'll affect you fast forward and rewind and whatever else. So there you go, that's in place. Boom, easy. So stick your cover plate back on then. Remember that goes into two kind of tabs at the bottom first, and then the screws go in. So I always use tweezers for this, as I say, because I always drop them screws back into the transport. I've learnt my lesson. And I'm, I'm here to share these lessons with you guys. So, yeah, tighten them two up. Remember, they go into plastic, so don't over-tighten them, because they'll be knackered if you do. All right, so once that's done, flip it back over, and then we're ready to put our... Uh, our capstan belt, our main play belt on. And as you can see, this is the one that came off. It's massive. It's wrong, basically. Totally wrong. So it's basically a case of uh, why not for the sake of six or seven quid, you know, I uh, get that. Get it changed and get it on. And then as I've shown in other videos, stick it onto the, uh, the motor first. And then just wiggle that round and sit it inside them two little black tabs there. So I think the reason why this was making so much noise before was because of uh, on the back of the motor, I'm just tightening the screw there. There should be a little white plastic washer underneath the screw, right? Not underneath the plate, which is what I've just realised in doing this. And unfortunately, when I was videoing it, I missed it. But on this one, for some reason, the plastic washer was underneath the plate and it causes a bit of misalignment and it can cause your belt to come off it's only by two mil but why do the job three times so take the washer out of there if it's on if it's uh underneath the plate and that goes underneath the large brass screw at the back these two are just little two little black plastic screws again uh, black metal screws again these go into plastic though so don't over tighten them because uh if they do you're just in a world of pain, you're going to end up super gluing screws in or putting, finding bigger screws or something like that. Alright, and that's good. Caps in spinning freely. It's time to fire this back in, I think. Uh, let's plug our motor back into there. That's our power feed for the motor. These plugs are a bit fragile, but generally they're alright after a couple of pulls. So... I fired this back in, Just it's just got one screw in it or something. And uh, I've plugged it, everything in except for the head feeds, which is the three plugs that go into the main board. Simply because the plugs from are really fragile. And if I have to plug them, unplug them, they'll just knack them. But everything's good. Ejects. Uh, I took a bit of boxcar willy in. Quietly confident on this one. 
and it's because it skipped forward to that two seconds you can tell that the mode select's working so we'll do a rewind and you'll notice that that motor is a lot quieter too and i haven't done anything to the motor i, I actually nearly bought one the other night in anticipation of having to change it and i thought you know what i'll just wait and see and you know save myself money for a new motor there but yeah there we go it playing and it's staying in play as well there's no feedback on there because the heads aren't plugged in so if i just plug them heads in in a second then uh, you'll be able to see the levels so turn it off i'll just risk it electrocuting myself here i'd like to say i've unplugged it for safety for, for, the, for, for any kids watching i've unplugged it all right um everybody else don't electrocute yourself this top one here is a power to your race head it is so fragile this needs to be in once and out once and that's it don't play about with it right then so now when i press play this should give me levels and there we go another one saved uh this will be aligned and i think i might keep this one for a bit actually i'm gonna get a bit bored of the nakamichi but uh thanks for watching i hope this was informative and useful I've got loads of other videos on a 611S for alignment and azimuth playing with and levels and that. So have a look round, drop a like and subscribe. Bye bye.